Ridiculously Happy People cast. I'm Sophia Lemon, and today I have Nikki Yo with me from the Ava Solution. How are you, Nikki? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. Good, <laughs> good. My, uh, we tonight are getting our driveway done, and that's a bit of a mm-hmm. weird story. We had um, some plumbing issues in the spring and had a nice stretch right down the middle of our driveway, torn up, completely excavated, new plumbing laid, and then filled back in, but they did not repave it. Hey. So that's been very interesting. Um, from my house, you like come up the driveway, go all the way down the house, and then we have a big parking pad, and then we've got a garage and a backyard and everything else. So it's like, it's a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> so tonight, my um, my husband's best friend's coming over with his tractor, and they're going to dig out a bit of the what's been refilled so they can regrade it, and then this week they're going to add in the asphalt. So it's going to be a bit of a thing but then it'll be done and we'll have our driveway back and it'll look great and ultimately it's going to be exciting so lots going on here good timing i guess when you have the road construction going on too Um, yeah right might as well do it all at once (laughs) (laughs) now this friend with the tractor is this the friend who also lives in the country and like doesn't always have his phone on (laughs) it is it's it's one in the same (laughs) That's excellent. <laughs> he doesn't also happen to be the one that's having a baby, does he? He is, yeah. Oh my, my goodness. husband made his made his best friend when he was like thirteen, and they've been friends ever since. So he's so cute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're pretty adorable. Obviously, a good friend if he shows up with the tractor to help with things. <laughs> he is. There are no complaints there. That's for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a good friend. Oh yeah. my goodness. Speaking <laughs> of good friends, I had a ball tournament mm-hmm. on the weekend. Mm-hmm. It was fun. <laughs> Exhausting, but fun. I com- I'm sure I complained through the entire last game about how sore I was going to be. Like, I turned to one of my teammates at one point, and I was like, I'm going to go home, I'm going to sit down, and I'm pretty sure my legs are going to fall off. Like, oh, no. <laughs> so sore. Um, but I did get to see a lot <laughs> of people and a lot of people that I haven't really seen since before the pandemic, because Mm -hmm. um, we didn't really play that first season during Mm -hmm. 2020. And then after that, I had moved to tiny. So there was an entire season that I didn't play. And then it's just been a little bit slow getting back at it because, you know, they're not sure if they're doing these tournaments and all of that. Yeah. But got to see a whole bunch of people, including my cousin. Who I got to see play, and we're gonna talk about that in another episode. <laughs> okay, <laughs> a story unto itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel very lucky that I play ball with a lot of genuinely nice people, and it is particularly good timing because, as you know, Nikki, but no one else knows, I was trying to write notes for these episodes and like have them to you before we recorded (laughs) the episodes. And this one in particular, I did not do. I did not have any notes for this episode written until this morning. So you haven't read any of my notes. No, Um, I have not. Yeah. And I didn't really know what to say (laughs) until (laughs) this weekend happened. And then this morning I'm like writing possibly the longest set of notes that I have written (laughs) so far for an episode but you still haven't seen these notes um so today we are talking about recognition and acknowledging others which i think goes really well with our episode on gratitude and mindfulness if people want to go back and listen to that which also i listened to this morning while i was driving to the studio very cool yeah so where (laughs) gratitude and mindfulness was about you know taking mental stock of things that you have in your life that you are grateful for. Um, This episode, Recognition and Acknowledging Others, is about doing the same thing, but for other people, like telling them, hey, you did Mm -hmm. a good job, or you're really nice, or whatever. Um, I don't know if you had anything that you wanted to start off with. I have all of these notes that I'm ready to launch into. (laughs) Get launching. (laughs) Um, so yeah, I got to see all these people that I haven't seen in a while. And I really wanted to recognize this one person who I did recognize in person as well, Mm -hmm. um, at the tournament. And his name is Bobby. 
and Bobby deserves a shout out. So Bobby is going to hear about this later. <laughs> when I send him the episode and go here, <laughs> you're in it. Um, so Bobby is one of those people who befriends like everyone and he has befriended everyone in our ball community. And that's probably not entirely accurate, but everyone that I see <laughs> that he interacts with, he's friends with, and he just treats everyone so kindly and like they matter, like he goes out of his way to say, hi, how's it going? Mm -hmm. Like what's new in your life? All of that. Um, he asks people how they're playing. He tells them when they're playing well, all super normal stuff. Um, but this weekend I decided to tell him <laughs> that he should be really proud of how he makes the people around him feel good um which i totally got a hey right back at you buddy <laughs> response mm -hmm. which of course made me feel good um mm -hmm. but i think you know it's a really good launching point for this episode um because it if you watch like it really shows with him like people show up to his games to watch him mm -hmm. play and talk to him and he's just I think it's such an important quality to have to just make the people around you feel like they matter. And mm -hmm. it's a thing that <laughs> we don't do enough of these days and can have a significant impact on someone's mental health. Um, yeah. And even if you're acknowledging people, recognizing the things that they're doing well, it can have quite an impact on someone's mental health. And speaking of mental health, listen to our last episode on mental health. Like if I tell you, Nikki, that you're doing a great job, I don't know that you're like not having a good day and telling you that you're doing a good job is making yeah. you feel like, great. I'm just <clears throat> like, hey, good job. You never know the impact yeah. that this stuff's gonna have on someone's day or how they're feeling. Absolutely. And I know I've shared about Paige in my networking group, her sending me a message saying, oh, you're doing a good job. Like mm -hmm. almost making me cry because I was having a bad yeah. day. Or there's the time that I sent a card to another person in my networking group, Silka, sent her a card just saying like, you should be really proud of yourself for how you treat people. Because you treat people incredibly well and her saying the exact same thing. I was having a horrible day just everything was going wrong and I got that and it made me cry. Like it's, mm -hmm. it felt so good. Just those little things can really turn people's days around, lives Absolutely. around. Mm -hmm. So as people know, if you listen to our introduction episode, Nikki and I met in a networking organization called BNI. And in mm -hmm. BNI, <clears throat> we live by seven core values. And those core values are giver's gain, building relationships, lifelong learning, traditions and innovation, positive attitude, accountability, and recognition, last but not least. And I'm sure mm -hmm. we'll probably do episodes on all of these things over the course cool. of this podcast. <laughs> but basically, recognition is just acknowledging the contributions of others and the fact that by mm -hmm. doing so, by acknowledging the people around you and what they bring to your life, you'll foster a positive and supportive environment and i wonder because i'm going to get into how i learned this do you know how you learned how to recognize people because you do <laughs> <laughs> you do a pretty good job of the recognition thank thing. you <laughs> thank thank you for recognizing <laughs> um that's a really good question um i I think it's something like just from growing up like my mm -hmm. mom was always really big on like pointing mm -hmm. out like you did something very good here this was great behavior like you know flip side too that wasn't appropriate you can't do that like the whole shit <laughs> <you can't do. laughs> yeah um but she she always made a very strong effort to like have that one-on-one -on -one and say like you did something really good and you should be really proud of yourself and I'm really proud of you for what you did mm -hmm. and like that's a warm warm bubbly feeling right like <clears throat> so it was something that all through my life I felt like that was important to carry and I've I'm I feel like you can see the effects of something if 
It's as even little things like someone holds the door and you say, thank you so much. They're like, oh, you're welcome. Not like, yeah. okay, not going to do that again. Right. Like <laughs> when you can visually see the impact that the recognition and acknowledgement that you're giving um, to someone has on them. I don't think that's the only reason you should do it, but I think it's a mm-hmm. great reminder of why you should do it. Like mm-hmm. there, it takes nothing out of your day to say, thank you for helping me. Thank you for doing this. Or you did awesome. You should be proud of yourself. Those are very small things and they go a long way. And I think that there are more people should do them mm-hmm. <laughs> and follow through on that because it takes nothing. Like, to send a quick email and say, I really appreciate that you took the time to Mm -hmm. work through uh, a tough project with me. Um, And whether that's for your employer or your employee or your coworker or colleague, like, I mean, sky's the limit on on how you can be sending those kinds of recognition, but it it makes a big difference for sure. Mm -hmm. It does. It doesn't take much out of your day just to Mm -hmm. recognize someone for doing the slightest thing well, or even Mm -hmm. just, I I mentioned this, I think in our very first episode, the time I was walking down the street and some dude said, I like your sunglasses or something like that. And I was like, that is obviously is something that has stuck with me because that happened like 10 years ago. Yeah. Like it's been a while. It made you feel good. And you're like, oh, I do have I know. sunglasses. And it was great. And unexpected, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I think maybe the unexpected part of it might be um, mm-hmm. the big thing. But it's something that I am increasingly trying to make a better point of doing. Like with Bobby, mm-hmm. like I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell him. You should be proud yeah. of how you treat people because... Way too many people just, yes, and a lot of people don't treat others particularly well, and Mm -hmm. we really recognize that. We do a great job of recognizing when someone doesn't treat people well. Wouldn't it be nice if we did a better job of recognizing when people treat others well? Maybe that will encourage them to continue doing that, you know? Um, Yeah, I'm trying to do a better job of recognizing people, but I... I don't really call people out for negative things um, often. And Mm -hmm. I think this is something that I learned in team sports, coincidentally, um, because I grew up playing baseball and basketball. And, um, you know, we really had it drilled into our heads that you need to be a good teammate and a good sportsman. Um, Mm -hmm. And that stuff is really stressed in youth sports. Mm -hmm. And you really, you don't really notice it when you're a kid. Like everyone shakes hands at the end of a game. Yeah. Um, You know, you see the really cute videos on like Instagram of like one kid falls over and someone from another, you know, another five-year-old from another team picks them up. Um, That's cute and all that stuff. But you really start to see it when you are playing adult sports. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So those people who practice recognition like Bobby, they make a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, they have lots of people building them up all the time when they're not at their best. Um, and because they're always doing that for other people, their teammates and even other players do that mm-hmm. for them. Um, so this weekend we played teams that we knew and teams that we didn't know. There was a surprising number of people there that I <laughs> had never seen in my life, which is unusual in the ball <laughs> community. But um we had so much fun with all of the teams that we played this weekend. And for example, our final game um, for finals, which we won, yay. Yay. Um, (laughs) We had a woman on our team, one of our pitchers, and on the other team was her daughter. Oh. Um, We spent the entire game, like picking on her daughter in a nice way and yeah. the the umpires got in on it and like we kept score on like when the mother you know had a good play against the daughter when the daughter had a good play yeah. against the mother like the umps started keeping track so you have the scorekeeper who's keeping track of the game and then we had the umps who were keeping track of the number of times that the daughter like hit the ball right past the her mother and all mm-hmm. that fun stuff um and you know we're picking on her daughter but at the same time when <sighs> Um, her mother hits the ball and it goes to her daughter and her daughter picks her picks it up and throws it to first and gets her out. We're like, ooh, 
<laughs> and you can just see like putting an enormous smile on her daughter's face, yeah. which just felt really nice. And then another team that we played um, before finals, we ended up mercying them. So we put them out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, obvious early on that we were going to beat them. But they were having so much fun. Like, they're dancing on the diamond, and they're, they're like... there to have a good time. They were having a delightful time. <laughs> and at one point, the one woman is like, can you guys stop it? Like, this is starting to not be fun. And I just yelled <laughs> back. I'm like, I was like, you are acting like you're having fun. And she goes, yes. you know what? I, I am having fun. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you can play team sports and yeah. one team can be more skilled and you can kick butt and both teams can still get along really well but yeah. that's great you really start mm -hmm. to see where people did not learn how to be a good sportsman and did not learn recognition yeah. <clears throat> when they're having trouble or when they struggle to mm -hmm. recognize other people um you see it because you know they have trouble keeping a team together um mm -hmm. they get competitive with their own teammates players yeah. leave the team no one wants to play with them or against them you know we've had that in this particular tournament there's teams that we genuinely don't enjoy playing against like you really want to beat them because they're not nice <laughs> mm -hmm. um we didn't play against any of those teams this weekend so Good. that was really nice and it makes the sport, which is supposed to be fun, like we're not getting paid to play softball as no. adults. None of us are pros. I do not have a million dollar contract. We are only there for fun. And I said multiple times when I saw like, especially in men's games, people getting angry and like throwing their bat on the ground and stuff. Like it really must make playing the game not fun at all. Yeah. When you you know you're angry and you're arguing with your own teammates and yeah 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 not this cool. is not mlb with like 10 million dollar contract on the line mm -hmm. for one game yeah yeah and i mean i'm talking about a sport but obviously outside of that sport like do you really want to hang out with people who only have negative things to say and yeah how do you awful. feel yeah how do you feel when you just you just want someone to recognize the hard work that you're putting into something mm -hmm. and they're not yeah it's so that like, like that's so defeating and it just like yeah. like it's one of those things where it's like then you get that feeling if i can't do anything right no matter how hard i try it doesn't matter yeah. like that you turn that inwards nothing i do is good enough like it's such a slippery slope and really all it takes is for someone to say like thank you for trying or a good job or or you know you'll get it next time like something so small can blow up or you can shake it off and move on right <laughs> i assume this is a really common <clears throat> thing in relationships that whole i mm -hmm. can't do anything do right, anything right. Thing. Is, is that not a thing that a lot of people in I couples think so. say pretty regularly yeah. Or, you know, when you have kids, Nothing I like, do is good enough for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or when you have kids, and especially now, like if, if your kids are so young, they don't yet know how to recognize people. They don't necessarily yeah. know that that's a thing that you should do. So like, how often do you just feel exhausted and you're like, it never ends and there's no recognition for what I'm doing? Yeah. And those are like the crazy moments too. Like my, so my daughter's like starting to get there and I've like from the get go been trying to drill awesome. this into her. Like she'll do something. I'm like, you're so amazing. You should be so proud. Mommy's so proud of you. Look what you did. And she's like, oh, I did that. Awesome. Did you see? I did that. <laughs> and now she'll come over with like her Lego and she'll be like, mommy, I did that. I made that. Look, look. <laughs> and she's like so jazzed and it's, it's awesome. And then she'll take the, she, has started to pick up on times like if I am particularly exhausted I'll notice that she'll come over and she'll say mommy you're best mummy ever and I'm like oh, Evelyn thank you Impressive. like and she's so she's, she plays it like she is so sweet sometimes and most of the time and it's little things like that where like she's starting to pick up on like you know what 
I have a great mummy and I love my mummy. And she did like everything for her is the best ever in the whole world, right? So she'll be eating the lunch that she asked for. And mummy, you the best cooker in the whole world. This is the best lunch <laughs> in the whole world. And like everything is such an extreme pie, right? But it's little things like that. And like, I know when I'm having a bad day and she turns to me and tells me that the mac and cheese from the box is the best thing she's ever had in her entire life. Like that makes me feel like I'm on cloud nine. So <laughs> That's really awesome. It's That's so, so cute. cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. And I, I bet if you go to like couples counseling, if you're having trouble inside of your relationship or if you read that book that I recommended early on mm -hmm. in the podcast, The Dance of Anger, if it, these conversations that you might be having with your partner, for example, about talking about your feelings and how, you know, yeah. when you did this, this is how I actually felt about that. Yeah. Well, imagine if that was not just about negative stuff. Imagine yeah, if it was I like- Yeah, good stuff too. When you did the laundry, that gave me a massive sense of relief. Like, mm -hmm thank you i really appreciate that yeah. like that kind of stuff goes a long way in making people feel valued and yeah it's it's super important and so we've talked about bni obviously i shared the core va core values and so i'm currently president of my bni chapter which is bni georgian triangle um and our chapter gets constant praise for being such a cohesive group for being as diverse as we are um, and diverse in many ways like the age range in our chapter is impressive to the point that you'd think maybe we don't share the same sense of humor but our entire chapter will laugh all together everyone mm -hmm. um, at the same time which is awesome um, since joining the chapter though i have noticed that members will periodically comment on feeling left out um, as if they're not being included in all decisions. Um, mm -hmm. But what I've found is that what that really means is they're not necessarily getting the recognition that they deserve or need for the for work the that they're putting yeah. in. Yeah. And in our chapter, we've seen some incredible growth in the last little bit, which happens to have coincided with spending more time during our weekly meetings on recognizing people. So mm -hmm. every meeting we recognize members for their hard work and their kindness and their contributions. So every chapter will recognize the members who are performing well in mm -hmm. certain key performance areas. Um, and we've also been doing a much better job of recognizing people for things that you know it's not just hey you brought the most referrals or the most business to the chapter in the last month but like we see that you're working really hard like we can see yeah. in our stats that you know you've turned things around you're working really hard mm -hmm. and i'm also finding that us recognizing members is resulting in the members recognizing each other more frequently. Like mm -hmm. I've been getting emails from chapter members saying, Hey, you're doing a really good job, by the way. And from people that I never would have expected to get that from, yeah. which is like, Whoa. <laughs> When it's nice that you're getting it outside of the setting, it's not just in the meeting yes. when they're forced to recognize or taking time separately to be like, I <laughs> yeah. want to make sure that you know how valued you are, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's amazing how mm -hmm. just recognizing people for what they're doing has mm -hmm. such a, an incredible impact on, yeah, mental health and how people are mm -hmm. feeling. Absolutely. What do you want to share about recognition? I feel like for, for so much, it's like, I think a lot of why recognition is not given is because people expect things to be done for them. Like yeah. in a workplace, you're expected to do your job. So why do I have to recognize you for doing it properly? Like that's what you're paid to do because it's the nice thing to do. In in the home, your, your portion of the chores is to do the laundry. So why should I have to say thank you for washing, drying, folding, and putting away my clothes? Because it's a nice thing to do. I still <laughs> took time out of my day to do something for you um, at yeah. the store. The polite expectation is that you hold the door for the person behind you, particularly when they're loaded down with 
three kids in a shopping cart or something like it's mm-hmm. expected but because you did it it's the nice thing to do you should still be recognized for that and i think that's a lot of why like people have this sense of entitlement like i don't have to go out of my way to make anyone feel special they just should be nice yes people should be nice but that goes both ways right the person it's expected that you do a good job and you do the job that you're you're paid to do it's expected that you pitch in in your home it's expected that you are polite to strangers when you're out in public but it should also be expected that you say thank you and you use your manners and as we tell our daughter to use your nice words <laughs> like <laughs> you use your please and thank yous you ask for things appropriately you don't make your demands like you can't have the expectation on one side without having it also on the other right so that's my two cents there (laughs) i (laughs) honestly didn't really think about those parts um (laughs) yeah when people are expected to do things and then you therefore don't don't have to recognize them them. Mm -hmm. it's hilarious because i feel like i've heard that come out of people's mouths like why yeah like she's supposed to be bad so she did mm-hmm. it bare minimum. And I think it's something we probably see in business where if you're getting into small business, one of the top recommendations that you're going to get on how to build a business that people want to work with is blow people away. Don't just do the yeah. bare minimum. Make sure that you're going way above and beyond and do 10 times more than your competition will do and that is the real bare minimum of business do way more than what people are expecting in order to get people to say thank you that's really frustrating which sucks because i feel like and i i so push back against this idea of like the 24 7 grind of being a small business Mm -hmm. owner because i do not work for myself so that i can work myself to death like and i have every so often i have this like epiphany reminder of like I do what I can do so I can be the flexible parent. I can have a flexible work day. I can go out for lunch in the middle of the day if I feel like it and take two hours instead of Mm -hmm. 45 minutes because I have a five minute commute from the restaurant to work. Like Mm -hmm. these are all things that is an enjoyment for me and a benefit of working for myself. I shouldn't have to work 24 seven in Mm -hmm. order to make my clients feel like I'm doing a subpar job. Like that does Mm -hmm. not, does not click for me. Well, I mean, you're working for yourself because you're deciding you don't want to live like everyone Mm -hmm. else is. It's working nine to five, five days a week and has people telling them what to do. I cannot believe I, I see on Facebook, the negative stuff that I see tends to be like those Karen videos and like, um, like ridiculous text conferences conversations for example I, I see a lot of these for some reason um where bosses or, or managers of you know like at like pizza hut are telling their employees mm-hmm. you know uh so and so is six so you have to come in tomorrow yeah <laughs> my personality is like if if someone told me like you have to come in tomorrow and i'm not scheduled and expecting to be there like i'd be like actually you cannot force me to force come into me. work i mean there's no law that says if you need me there i must be there like mm-hmm. and the number of people who are like we're uh, could say we're really struggling and are you able to come in i would really appreciate, really appreciate it, it. You'd, be doing yeah. it. Yeah. you'd be doing me a big favor yeah like thank you so much instead of saying that they're saying you have to come in I need yeah, you here, like, so you have to. No, I'm know. sorry, but your need does not mean that I have to. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah, drives me nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this going above and beyond in business thing is a little bit too much. Like, uh, I've, yeah. you know, the other thing you'll hear a lot is, okay, when someone contacts you, make sure you respond to them in the first five minutes. Are you yeah. kidding me? B- if someone S- absolutely not. If someone contacts me at 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday, I'm not responding in five minutes. I'm not going to be available. I'm not going to check my email. I'm not responding. I will respond on Monday like a normal human being and enjoy the rest of my weekend. And I don't know if you noticed, but Friday evening at 6.30, we got a voicemail of the voicemail i checked that this morning and i was gonna like we'll probably talk about it today i listened to it and i was like 
You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> at at 6.30, Friday evening, we got a voicemail <sighs> that said, are you, are you available to take a family photo tonight? No. No. <laughs> like, absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. Like, I understand that my phone number is on my website, and I am a, a person, I'm a human being, but, like, this is my business, not my 24-7 obligation. Yeah. No, I'm not answering the phone at 6.30 on a Friday and saying yes to a photo shoot that I'm not prepared for the no. same night. If I had answered that phone and said yes, I would have had to get to them before, like, when is the sun going down right now? Like, 8.30? Like, yeah. I would have had two hours to get showered, put makeup on my face, get dressed, get my camera gear together, and drive there. Yeah. It's like an hour yeah. drive. It would have been yeah. an hour drive for me. I'm assuming it was in the Collingwood area. But anyway, I was blown away um, and I did not respond. I, I saw it on the weekend at some point and I listened to it because I was like I'm curious. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. I literally, when I logged in this morning, I was like, oh, it's probably confirmation for the location for yeah. Monday night. And then I was like, no, no, <laughs> that is not what I expected. Yeah. Oh, yeah. some people. Boundaries. <laughs> Speaking of boundaries. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> My goodness. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah. And that doesn't really have anything to do with <laughs> recognizing no, but... people, I suppose. Oh. But... Yeah, um, I I think it's important to recognize people more frequently for, you know, yes, you, you do have to do that. And also, thank you for doing that, because if you didn't, mm -hmm. we would all be in a rough spot. I would have to okay. do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love fast food, by the way. I Yeah. It's delicious. Um, it's convenient. I don't eat it all the time, but, you know, I it's eat sometimes. it. Sometimes. Yeah. People, there's, are you seeing the signs up and like, all of the Tim Hortons and like McDonald's and all of the fast food places saying, you know, be nice to our staff. Um, yeah, no harassment is tolerated and stuff like that. Which mm -hmm. would indicate that there's been quite a bit of harassment that people have been experiencing in the workplace from customers. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this blows me away. If you are prepared to speak down to someone who works at McDonald's, then you are completely missing the fact that if that person didn't work at McDonald's, you would not be eating McDonald's. My thing is, how do you speak down to someone that's making you food? Well, I mean, that's a whole <laughs> other thing. Like, I would be terrified. <laughs> like, I'm on my best behavior when there's food involved. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> True. Oh. But no, yeah, I see, I started seeing these signs pop up, like probably like smack in the middle of the pandemic when masking started becoming like optional. Yeah. And I started seeing these things. I said th I think people were coming in and getting very aggressive that I shouldn't mm -hmm. have to wear a mask and I shouldn't have to do this and you're following silly rules and like that's I feel like that's exactly when I started seeing all these these signs go up and they've stayed and it's awful. How are you expecting people to walk into your place of work? And mm -hmm. just completely harass you. Mm -hmm. It's yep. terrible. For sure. And again, you're putting yourself above others by, yeah. you know, being prepared to be so negative and have yeah. that complete lack of acknowledgement for other people. Mm -hmm. Like, again, I think actually the stories that I heard most about were at home depot and i don't know if people realize this but home depot has like often has um re retirees working in their stores and they were being harassed like crazy and the staff was being told just don't deal with it just if they come in and they're refusing to wear a mask and they're making a scene just let them go because it's not worth you getting assaulted <laughs> i yeah. think That's um awful. okay um, first of all, this is not public property. This is someone's business. They are leasing this space, which is owned by a private company. This property yeah. is private property, and you do not get to just willy-nilly walk in and do whatever you want. You can't actually take everything off the shelf and walk out with it without paying for it. It's not your yeah. space to enjoy. It's a private property. 
And the fact that people were prepared to verbally harass and assault, let alone physically assault, you know, elderly people, yeah. retirees, is just blowing my mind. And again, you're not above the people who are providing you with a service ever. If you have, no. you know, slightly more money than they have. I mean, again, if they were not here, you would not be, have the benefit of this service that they are providing you. Like, be a nice human being. So, yeah, it amazes me that people could go into, like, stores and fast food restaurants and show a complete lack of recognition for what yeah. those people are doing. And again, mm -hmm. you know, completely disregarding that they could be going through something and you're going to mm -hmm. pile on and make it worse by just being a jerk. Like, take the moment to recognize someone for providing you with a service that you are not providing yourself because they're frankly doing you a favor even if they're getting paid for it and if you did listen to the last episode not the last episode i guess it's two episodes ago now it's very confusing when we are batch recording <laughs> episodes <laughs> um, on mental health um you can probably guess from what i mentioned like i'm dealing with depression people recognizing me for anything right now is having uh, an amazing impact on me. Like, if people were not recognizing me for doing things well right now, I would be in a vastly different place mentally than I am. The fact that anyone is reaching out to me and saying you're doing a good job is partially what is keeping me going. Um, yeah, and since people often don't talk openly about what they're struggling with you probably won't even know the impact mm -hmm. the important impact that you're having on someone by just saying you did a good job and that's all you have to do like you said it takes no effort just open your mouth and speak you did a good job <laughs> yeah oh my goodness i wonder actually if this is at all in your little business toolbox for small business owners about the recognition thing and maybe you need to add it if it's not in there i think i should add it in <laughs> i know we yeah. talk about like a person the personal touch and um and working like your contact with clients but i think that recognition like it's it's huge. Like I talk about like, so I'll grab this one line, my freebie, mm -hmm. a special thank you note included in a product shipment, for example, can go a long mm -hmm. way. And also consenting flowers on launch day, holiday, and a special occasion greeting cards or your monthly reminders that don't even have to do with your business. Um, basically you keep those boundaries friendly while still being, or those relationships friendly while still having the professional boundaries. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that recognition, even like I love like with your thank you cards, you're it's you're not just saying it's not thanks. just like, oh, thanks for your business. <laughs> yeah. It's like mm -hmm. thanks for choosing me to capture mm -hmm. these moments for you. Like you're recognizing that they had other they had tons of options mm -hmm. and they chose they specifically wanted to work for you. And that's your business and that's fantastic. But that's a great recognition back and forth and acknowledgement that they trusted you and your style and your experience and all of these things. And I think that's awesome. Well, I think anytime anyone chooses to work with me, I think it says something about who I am as a human being, because I know how uncomfortable it is to be in front of a camera. I mean, people are not going to know this, but every time we start recording this podcast, I hit the record button and then there's like, uh, possibly a solid 10 seconds of me being like, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so if someone else is behind the camera and taking your photo, like I know how uncomfortable that is. And it takes a lot of effort for people to, you know, do it, let alone when you're yeah. doing family photos and you need to bring 25 people together and yeah, exactly. organizing all of that. And it's a lot to involve someone who you're not like, intimately like familiar yeah. with um into that sort of you know space where you could be self-conscious and mm -hmm. you know have low self-esteem and all of that so yeah i take it as a massive compliment when people 
decide that I'm the person that they want to work with because that in itself tells me something more about my personality than about my photos and my pricing yeah. and everything. It's more like, okay, you make me feel comfortable. You make me yeah. feel like seen. You make me feel, you know, confident. So that's a, mm -hmm. I think, a rather yeah. significant compliment. So Absolutely. thank you to all of my clients of all time. And yay! In the future. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us where people can find your uh, business? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so our essential tips is on our website, uh, www.theavasolution.com. There'll be a nice pop-up when you hit the, the homepage, and you can download our free guide there. Excellent. Is there anything else that you want to add about recognition? Like, we've pretty much covered it. I feel like we could just say it over and over and over again. J be nice to people be nice. and say thank you. Yeah. yeah. I recently actually not recently because now i feel like i feel like everything in my head is recently and it like goes mm -hmm. back um mm -hmm. in a bni meeting probably last year um i was in a breakout room with a couple of the members and we were talking about client relationships and that kind of thing and one of the members made a really good point where she'd re that she'd recently read something about the difference uh, in being nice and being kind. Mm -hmm. And this has stuck with me since. And it was that when you're nice, there's an aspect of manipulation. You're expecting something out of it. You're giving a compliment because you want a compliment back. You're doing something for someone because you want them to talk about how great of a person you are. But when you're being kind, you're just doing something out of goodness. You're not expecting anything in return. You're not expecting someone to um you know come mow your lawn and and deliver all your groceries like you're not ex you're not getting anything out of it so that's has stuck with me to the to the point where like i don't think a, a week goes by where i don't think about this aspect of kindness mm -hmm. and it's something that i've even shifted in the way i talk to Evelyn instead of saying oh that was a really nice thing you did I'll say honey that was so kind that was so mm -hmm. kind that you helped pick up your sister's toys that was so kind that you pushed the accessible button for the people behind us like things like that and that's that shift that eliminates the expectation behind the actions that you're doing you're recognizing someone because it's the kind thing to do and it would make them feel good. You're not getting anything out of that yourself by giving someone recognition and acknowledging their hard work. You're doing it because it's it's right. It's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, thank you for saying that because I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, it was like a light bulb. I was like, oh my God, like this yeah. is huge. I was like, I have never looked at it in that light before. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And yeah, that kind of blew my mind just now. And also I'm <laughs> very relieved now that you say that that I used the word kind when I was thanking Bobby yeah. for being <laughs> a kind human being. Yeah. Um, I guess the flip side to it is that we all have to get a little bit thicker of a skin yeah. when it comes to how people are talking to us. Yeah. Um and this actually is related to your B and I chapter. I was and I'm not entirely sure if you were around for this particular moment, but there was some tension in the chapter between two members and one member mm -hmm. ended up leaving for not for the same reason, not because okay. there was tension with another member, but um, just personal, you know, mm -hmm. commitments. So, and I ended up having, and unfortunately these two people were friends and the tension oh. caused a bit of a rift between the two of them and mm -hmm. you know they were both having their own feelings about other stuff out outside of their friendship yeah. outside of the chapter outside of everything um, and you know they were having a difficult time with communicating with each other about yeah what was going on so i ended up having a conversation with the one member and she was describing how she was feeling about what was going on and i i had to in my role as director consultant, I was helping her just work through this conflict that was going on. And I guess the light bulb moment for her, because I'm not the best at explaining these types of things, was when I was saying, you know, when you're in traffic 
and someone cuts you off or they pass you and they're driving like a jerk and they give you the finger when, you know, you haven't done anything <laughs> to deserve having someone flipping you mm -hmm. the bird in traffic when they're driving like that and taking out their feelings on you it doesn't have anything to do with you mm -hmm. like they're acting like that because there's something going on for them that's stressing them yeah. out they're at the end of their rope you know they're acting out because they're yeah. having a difficult time yep and i try my best to remember this as much as possible when i'm dealing with someone out in public and they're acting strangely angry yeah. ragefully um I am so impressed with people in the service industry who can yeah. let people take their anger out on them because you never know what's happening. Like, you know, yeah. they have a partner in the hospital and they're taking care of their mother and, you know, their kid just died and they're having a yeah. heck of a time keeping themselves together emotionally. I can identify with that. Like, if I'm in a bad mood, it often comes out as anger unfortunately yeah. it'll come out as anger before it comes out as anything else <laughs> um so yeah just reminding yourself that other people treating you poorly is more of a comment on them yeah. and probably more so a comment on what they're going through than it is a comment on you and what you're doing and who you mm -hmm. are as a person yeah. and hopefully being able to tell yourself before you respond this person's probably having a bad day mm -hmm. can allow you to respond with empathy and kindness and to mm -hmm. not turn around and say you're an asshole yeah you know <laughs> but even turn around you don't have to say anything you could just simply walk away or you could turn around and say yep. you really sound like you're having a rough time mm -hmm. you know i can see that you're having a difficult day or yeah you know even that sort of recognition could mm -hmm. you know i'm dealing with a lot in my life right now there's a i have a lot of health problems my partner just got yep. fired like but i'm not yep. saying any of that out loud i am just yelling at this person on the street if that person turned around and said are you okay like you seem to be having a bad day like mm -hmm. i you know i see you i see that you are struggling even that, if it's not, you know, a positive thing, I see that you're having a bad time, mm -hmm. that could even have a positive impact on someone. What do you For say sure. to that? No, I'm great. Everything in life is fantastic. My life is the best ever. Okay there. Yeah. Sure, you're, sure it is. Yeah. <laughs> you like, that person knows. They know they're not in a great space. But if you say, I see that you're having a hard time, maybe that'll make them have a closer look at what's going on mm -hmm. <laughs> might make yeah. them break down in tears in which case <laughs> you might have to coddle them a little bit <laughs> but uh <laughs> see it's a better problem to have than you know having a complete brawl in the street oh for sure mm -hmm. yes without a doubt is there, is there anything else that you would like to share about recognition and acknowledgement um i think we pretty well covered everything cool from my perspective <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> yes. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan too. Mm -hmm. I love when I'm hearing I'm doing a good job. <laughs> yeah. Makes um, a big difference. It does. Mm -hmm. Speaking mm -hmm. of thank you cards, I do have thank you cards for sale in my Etsy shop. Um, so I'm going to put the link in the show notes and I have a code for that. And it is PeopleCast, P-P-L-C-A-S-T. Um, for 20% off of thank you cards and, well, frankly, anything else in the shop. So check that out. Um, grab some of those some gratitude cards. Send some thank yous to some people that you love or people that you just want to make smile and practice a little bit of kindness and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Do you have a ridiculously happy moment? It's so I funny do. that we com complained a little bit and now we're going <laughs> to... We complain about people not being kind, so I feel like let's, that's allowed. Let's turn it around. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my baby is walking, and she's not a baby; she's 16 months old now. So she's walking, and it's super exciting. She still has like the security blanket of holding onto a, a finger. That's the cutest she, time, though. 
Oh my god, she is so adorable, and she it just gets so proud of herself, and like gets all excited, and like jump, 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 and she's like holding on to everything, and and wanting to check everything out, and she's sitting in big girl chairs, and it's just mind boggling that this time last year she was this tiny little bean, and now she's getting ready to run around like a maniac. Cool. Which I'm sure is going to be just delightful for you when you're at home. And it's like, one's going that way and the other one's going oh that way. Oh my goodness, they're wild already. I can, can't can wait. People always say it's the boys that are the rough ones. And I, my girls would give them a run for their money. It's not not true. <laughs> Those people obviously haven't had teenage girls yet. <laughs> yeah, right? I'm like, I have three sisters. I don't know what you're talking about. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> your, your parents know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they know. They know. <laughs> that's so exciting. Yeah, super fun. And that's so cute busy, when they busy. have to hold on to. Oh, I love it. So then she won't want to hold my hand, and then she'll need to hold my hand again. So well, yeah, she'll be fine. Get there. She'll get over yeah. all that. <laughs> yeah, I love. I love the stage where they have to hold on, and when they're making all of the faces, like, oh my. Can you see what I am yeah, doing look right what now? I'm doing. <laughs> and then it's so funny. She gets all all like nervous. Like if I take one hand away, she'll take her free hand and she'll like cover her eyes. Like oh, I can't oh, look. That's so cute. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> oh, it's pretty cool. That's impressive. That is impressive. Yeah, <laughs> she's a cool kid. <laughs> so my ridiculously happy moment is a little bit more self serving, but <laughs> I'm gonna recognize myself. Um, awesome. So I have Google alerts turned on for my name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I previously had it turned on for ridiculously happy people, but then I okay. would get like notifications about like nothing that had to do Random. with me at all. Yeah. So I tur turned that off, but I do have an alert on for Sophia Lemon. And I don't think I have ever gotten an accurate result from that because okay. there's a surprising number of ways to put Sophia and Lemon together that have absolutely nothing to do with me. Um, and enough. a lot of it is like, weirdly, jewelry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, she's interesting. interesting. But anyway, so this Google alert comes in and I'm like, ah, whatever. It's probably nothing about anything. Um, and I open it up and I'm like, no, that does say Sophia Lemon. Like just Sophia Lemon. I'm like, okay. So I click on it and open it up. And it is an article in the Toronto Star. And at the top of it is a family photo of a family that I photographed last mm -hmm. year. Um, one of the photos that I took. And so the photo headline photo in the article is this photo that I took with my name underneath it. And it's a story about people looking back. I guess, I guess it's been 20 years now to that massive blackout do you remember when the power went yeah. out like oh i sure everywhere? do yeah so yep. it was that was 20 years ago oh my god that's yeah it would have been 2003 right oh my goodness that's crazy so that it was uh yeah the parents the grandparents in that family it was them telling the story of their blackout and it happened to be on their anniversary and so Aww. they like called a bunch of their friends over and they had a canned dinner feast, uh, I think on their patio and look, watch the stars with all their friends. And yeah, mm -hmm. that's how they spent their anniversary. I'm like, well, that's really sweet. And look, my photo. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> that's so cool. I love that. It's a cool thing that happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> that's neat. <laughs> Speaking of ridiculously happy moments, we totally want to share your ridiculously happy moments on the show. So either share them with us in social media or you can record your own um, ha ridiculously happy moment. If you go to happy people, H-A-P-P-Y-P dot P-L slash moment, M-O-M-E-N-T, and we'll play it on the show. And your ridiculously happy moment does not have to be anything big, like your kid is walking now, or your photo <laughs> is in the Toronto Star. Um, it can be just something that made you smile. Like someone said, hey, I like your sunglasses. That would be a perfect one. That's a perfect ridiculously happy moment. <laughs> Love it. Which I keep mentioning. I can't believe that I remember that, but I guess that's how it works. <laughs> that's going to become like my memory now. <laughs> like Sophia, she had someone that liked her sunglasses at time. <laughs> I know. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. 
So where can people find you online, Nikki? We are on Facebook and Instagram at The Ava Solution and online at theavasolution.com. Excellent. I am Sophia Lemon, and I photograph ridiculously happy people, and you can find me on Instagram at ridiculously happy people, and that is PPL. You can also find me on Facebook and Pinterest and at sophialemon.com, and we invite you to join our Facebook community, which is at ridiculously happy people. And thank you so much for making the time to listen to this episode. We hope you feel inspired to live a little bit more kindly, more confidently, (laughs) and more ridiculously happy. And if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave a review in your podcast app of choice. Your feedback is super important to us and helps us in spreading this ridiculously happy movement. And remember that happiness is contagious. So who do you know who always seems to be super ridiculously busy? share this show with them and help them slow down for just a few minutes. You can find the shareable links for the show in the show notes. And thank you for listening. And we will see you next time.